Today we are going to draw a pumpkin. So the first thing to do is to start a new Photoshop document and I'm going to title this pumpkin and make your size five inches by five inches. Use a resolution of 300 pixels per inch. Please make sure you are in inches. Your color mode is just normally set to RGB color 8-bit and we're gonna start with a black background on it this time. And your color profile square pixels is by default correct. So I'm going to say create and here is my black background document. Now, if you forgot to do that, you could uh, create a background by either filling it with black or you could go up to layer and you could say new fill layer, solid color, and then you could also create it with black if you've forgotten to or just start over. So now we are going to use the ellipse tool in order to draw a round kind of an oval shape for the pumpkin. So for the ellipse tool, uh, first off, we would need to change our color and we want to grab a color that is an orange shade of a pumpkin. So I'm gonna get into these orange colors and I'm gonna grab a color right about there, I guess, so that my foreground is set to orange. And I'm gonna grab my ellipse tool, which is hiding inside of this rectangle and ellipse. Now my pumpkin isn't gonna be perfectly round, so I'm gonna draw that ellipse and I'm gonna leave it a little bit on the uh, oval side, I guess. So it's, you know, kind of kind of a round pumpkin, but I'm going to leave it on a bit of the oval side. You can use your space bar to move it around to kind of get it a little bit centered into your black background square. Do leave a little bit of room at the top because we're going to want to put a stem on that as well. So there is my orange oval that I've got. Now I'm going to take that and I'm going to add to it a inner shadow in order to start giving it a little bit of a 3D form to it. Inner shadow is found down here under this FX button down here at the bottom. So if I go to my effects and I say that I want to have a inner shadow. My inner shadow, make sure that your blend mode is set to linear burn at the top. You can leave it as a black and what I want to do is I want to change and have my uh, percentage is a little bit higher so I'm going to give it a little bit of choke. You see how it's just darkening it up a little bit. I'm going to go up, uh, I don't know, maybe about 30% somewhere in there just to give it a little bit of a, a choke and you can play around with your scale of your size too so that you want it to just have a nice little gradient uh, on your outside edge to give it that 3D effect to it. All right. So far so good. Now I'm going to use the ellipse tool again and I'm going to draw another round shape of the previous shape. Now I'm going to do mine, I'm, I'm going to reverse my colors and do it in white. I want you to keep it orange, okay? But I'm going to reverse it just so you can see the shape of how big mine is going to be. So I'm going to take my uh, ellipse tool again and this time I'm going to draw another ellipse tool. And I need to move it. So I'm holding my space bar in order to move it. I want it to be a little bit narrower. And I do want it to hit my top and my bottom. So I need to get it, oh, maybe make it a little bit narrower yet. You understand what I'm doing here, right? I'm creating my next little kind of vertical line in my pumpkin. So I'm gonna create my shape there. Now, oh, mine is still orange. I thought it was gonna be white but you can see the size of it. So that's perfect because you want it to be filled with orange anyway. Now we're going to take that and we're going to add the same layer style, that same inner shadow that we have on our first ellipse. We're going to put that onto our second ellipse. Now you could go and do that by hand. So you could go back into those effects and you could go to inner shadow again and you could do all those same numbers, but I can copy an effect from one layer to the other layer. And how I do that is I hold down my Alt key and then I grab the word effects and I drag it and I drop it on top of this other ellipse. And when I do that, you see I have now got my second ellipse with its shadow on there. So if I deselect off of it, you can see that it is actually there. Now I'm going to draw another ellipse and I'm gonna draw it again inside of there about the same height as before so that they match top and bottom, but I'm going to have it so that it is just a little bit wider. Let me get it lined up and then I'll create it just a little bit wider so that I can place it in the center of those. 
And once I've got it, again, I'm going to hold Alt and I'm going to drop my effect and I'm going to put it up on top of that ellipse. So continue doing that until you've got, you know, a few different uh, sections, I guess, of your pumpkin. I'm going to show you another really fast way. So I'm going to take my ellipse three and I'm going to duplicate that layer by grabbing it and dragging it to my new layer button. Now that it is duplicated, I'm going to hold Alt when I grab a side. When I hold Alt and grab a side, you see it grabs it from both sides. And because my effect was already on that layer, it just does it. I'm going to duplicate that one now. So grab it, drag it, duplicate it. And again, I'm going to hold Alt so that it brings it in from both sides. And there I have a lovely pumpkin. So now I can draw my mouth on a new layer. So I'm going to create a blank layer. This is going to be my mouth, so I'm going to label it right away and call it mouth. And I'm going to use my polygonal lasso and make sure that you are set to white because we're going to fill it with white. I'm going to draw my mouth of my pumpkin. So I'm just going to click and click. back there get that little zero or that little circle in order to grab it and now I can fill that with my paint bucket with white all right since we have a white mouth now we're going to add an inner shadow and a gradient overlay to that so under my effects give it an inner shadow and again you can play around with those different kinds of distance and so on to give it that bit of that 3D effect to it so that you can see the shadow that's coming into it. And while I'm in here, I'm also going to give it a gradient overlay. So if you click this gradient overlay, make sure you're clicking it and not just the check mark. I need to be on it. And now I can give it an overlay of a color. So if I go into uh, any of these colors, you're going to get different kinds of um, I guess colors in there. So for example, if I go to oranges, you know, here's kind of a gradient overlay to a from a yellow to a pink. Whichever one that you choose, that will go in as a gradient once I have gotten it out of this little box. And you can also change your angle of it. So you can play around, you could go from black to yellow, you could go from orange to pink, whichever. I think I'm gonna go instead, I'm gonna change this um, I'm going to go from yellow, but I'm going to change this pink one. So if you click right here on this color stop, then what happens is when I click there, now I can click here and I can change my color of that gradient. So if I go, for example, to a black, this would go from a yellow to a black gradient. You can see it in there. It's going to go on a downwards angle uh, for this gradient. And so what I'm going to do is just say, OK, and you'll see that that gradient should have gone in there. And why didn't it? All right, so here's why it hasn't gone in there. Let me double click this gradient overlay again. So it didn't go in there because it was set to overlay and my opacity is really low. So I want to just set it to normal and I want to change my opacity and bring it up a little bit so you can change it. And now it is live. And I was wondering why it wasn't working before. So you can change the angle of it. You can change the scale of it if you want it to be just a little bit faded. So put a gradient inside of your mouth. And then what we're going to do is we are going to also repeat that to draw the eyes and the nose. Now I like putting them on separate layers because then I can control my gradient separately. So I'm going to make a new layer here. This is going to be for both of my eyes. And now same thing, I'm just going to draw these eyes with my polygon tool and my eyes are going to be a triangle here and I will fill that eye with white and then I'm going to create another polygon I'm going to fill that one with white. And again, I can put my gradient on there. So if you want to just drag this one to start with, remember if you hold Alt and grab your gradient and your, shot, your inner shadow, you can put that on there. Then you can still double click inside of it. So if I double click my gradient, I can now still change my angle on those two different eyes that I want to for my gradient. And I can change my scale of that. So if I wanted it to be bigger, smaller, however I, I want to, or you can create it right from scratch. 
and then do one for your nose as well. So a new layer, I'm going to call that one nose. And I'm going to draw myself with my polygon tool, a nose. Uh, I'm going to make mine a little bit crooked. Fill it with white. Oh, I'm already on white. Go to my paint bucket, fill that in. And now I'm going to grab that effect again, hold my Alt key and drag it there. And I've got my jack-o'-lantern built. So continue now to build yourself a stem, put a gradient on your stem as well. So create a new layer. This would be called stem. I can draw again with my polygon tool, a bit of a stem up here. Take that stem, I'm gonna fill it with uh, white. Paint bucket, fill it with white. And now I'm gonna add a inner shadow and a gradient overlay on it. So I'll drag that on there, but I want my stem to be a different color. So my gradient overlay, I'm gonna double click, go in here, change my stop on this side to be a green kind of a color. And I'm gonna change the one on this side to be a lighter green color. And you can play around again with your angle, with your size, with your opacity on there. Deselect, Control D, and your pumpkin is done. So you can save that out as your pumpkin file. Hand it in like we normally do.